I would like to share with you um, concerning the principles of giving and for those of you who are coming for the first time this is not every Sunday I just met with a mission, missionary couple or missionary directors from uh, California and the youth pastors from Tri-Cities from another church <laughs> and one pastor and a young man who was meeting with me he said every time I come to your church you're talking about money <laughs> and it happens like every six months or five months and I was like I don't know maybe it's what God is trying to tell you or something <laughs> he's like every time and I was like man I promise you this is not every Sunday but he's like I don't know man every time I come you're talking about money and so for those of you who are coming today uh, this is not every single time but money is very important part of our life and work is very important part of our life and it's part of Christian life to work to pay our taxes uh, to to give as well as to support our families we don't believe that a person should simply sit in the basement of their dad's and mom's house and wait for a politician to issue them checks and for them to just simply comment on everything they don't like online the bible says that he who does not work should not eat and this is i know every parent just said amen yeah so that means that if you are able to work physically and we're not talking about right now elderly we're not talking about people who are disabled we're not talking about people that are handicapped we're talking about people that are able to work it is god's will for you to work God's will for you is not to elect an official who will promote socialism or who will promote an idea of finances where we're all going to take money from the rich and spread it equally. It's just not the way the Lord put things in the Bible. This is not political. This is practical. God all of us wants all of us to work. God not only wants us to work, God wants us to be really good at our jobs. He wants to bless our work and playing video games is not work my friend work something that you do to contribute to the society to better people's lives and on top of work God wants us to manage our finances properly he wants us to pay our bills he wants us to take care of our family God wants us to pay our taxes and then God wants us to also be generous make enough that we can be generous with those who are in need generous with first our family our parents maybe who are elderly people who are going through a challenging time in our own immediate family and then help crises that are happening maybe in our city or in the world today last year in December I've talked about tithing and I've talked about the history of tithing talked about the New Testament of tithing I won't repeat that message you can go on YouTube and re-listen to that but today I want to take one more step further in this message and talk about five principles of giving according to Apostle Paul and I will title this message the gospel of generosity sometimes we get accused as hungry gen oh you guys are into the gospel of prosperity meaning we believe that God wants to prosper people but honestly everyone believes that what we preach though is generosity because you can be poor and still be generous and you can be rich and be generous God wants every person to be generous being rich does not mean you're more Christian than those who are not rich otherwise every drug dealer every pimp and every person that is wealthy and is sinful will be righteous now suddenly nor is being poor a sign that you are humble some people are poor because they're not responsible some people are poor because they're going through a very difficult time and some people are poor because they live in a very very challenging location on this earth and it doesn't mean anything concerning their walk with God don't use your finances to be a reflection of where you stand with God the Bible is the reflection of that where you and I stand with God is measured by what the Bible says not about what my bank account says amen amen with that said this is going to be more of a practical message and it's going to be more of a teaching if you're taking notes I'm going to give you five P's of what Apostle Paul Paul P's taught concerning the issue of giving now one thing I want to highlight from the beginning Paul did not talk about tithing now the tithing has been a big deal in the church and you know most churches if you go you're encouraged to tithe and in our church we also encourage you as a tithing a place where you can start but the main doctrine of concerning finances and giving at Hungry Gen is not tithing it's generosity and Paul didn't talk about tithing but he talked about something else he talked about generosity the first P that I want you to write down is that giving is a privilege giving is a privilege and Paul says that in first Corinth, second Corinthians I apologize verse chapter 8 verse 4 they begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem so he's talking about Macedonian churches 
who he visited that Paul says their financial situation was not that great they were actually struggling financially and when Paul arrived there Macedonian churches urged Paul again and again begged him to receive a gift from them I think Paul was reluctant because he saw that they were poor he's like guys no you're okay you don't have to give and they're like no we want to give we want to help brothers in Jerusalem and then Paul finally gave in and then Paul uses this phrase and he says they participated in this privilege guys giving is not something Ugh. and maybe today you came in like oh one of those Sundays man should have been sick today why did COVID not hit me or like something else hit me today why did I come to church today man should have went to another church today don't don't have that view concerning generosity now the the paradigm the frame of thinking that Christians uphold is this God owns I manage and that allows giving to flow freely now sometimes we have a hard time giving or living generous lives because that mindset is still not here we sing it we believe it we don't think it and why we don't think it because it's reflected by our checkbook because we can say one thing at church we can say another thing in our devotion time but how we spend our time and how we spend our money really reflects how we think your behavior doesn't reflect what you sing it reflects how you think Christians don't say lies they sing them we do myself included we a lot of times say things we don't think meaning our thinking didn't catch up with our speech and therefore our behavior doesn't doesn't line up with our speech because our behavior is really connected to our thinking and so if in our mind we still think it's I own God manages we will struggle with generosity and we will struggle with the idea of giving and honestly giving won't be a privilege it will be a burden it will be like ah they always want my money it's my money my precious it's mine and you want my money I work so it's mine and you want to take it and that's how many of us think now we won't say it we just think it and because we think on that level generosity comes very difficult now the other side is God owns I manage now I don't know where you bank I bank at Gisa Gisa credit union I started that when I was a teenager and had a, just been there get, uh, banking ever since then I have my money there imagine I come to Gisa credit union tomorrow morning I want to withdraw $100 and the bank teller let, let's call her Susie is there and I said I want to withdraw $100 and the Susie will roll her eyes and say uh I don't want to you know I would say excuse me I want to withdraw $100 and she would say well I don't feel like it I would say well no problem I'll come tomorrow I hope you feel better would I do that would you do that no there will be a sense of entitlement I want to talk to your manager uh, who's in charge here why because it's my money that you're managing it's not your money I'm managing so please understand is that let me ask you a question as a Christian I know we say that yeah God is the owner I'm the manager but when we look at our giving and spending if somebody who does not know your beliefs will they be able to come to that conclusion looking at your checkbook or not will they look at my life not my words but my life will they come to that conclusion or will this is the only con or this is just my speech I'm simply saying that but I'm not living that I experienced that one time I was sent to Ukraine on some kind of a trip this was a many years ago and I was given a particular budget to spend on my trip and I had few people with me so this budget included me these people um, and food I think it was just for food and for travel you know how easy it was to tip people in Ukraine with those money it was piece of cake I was the most generous person on the planet because it wasn't my money 
and I knew I couldn't bring that back because I won't get that money it will be put back in some other account whoever sent me and so it was so easy I remember I was amazed at how generous I was I would pay like a dollar for a coffee give two dollars for a tip I was like man I am a good man good American generous man and then I remember I sit down and I speak to God and I'm like Lord you know just you're so good and everything and, and, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said why can't you be like that with the other money that you have I'm like well it's mine and then I caught myself saying mine and I was like wait so I still act to some degree and think on some level that it's mine but if you ask me to say my theological statement I will say yeah the earth is the Lord's everything belongs to God but if he dares to ask me for anything I will say <coughs> mm -mm. my precious you can't have it <laughs> giving will not be a privilege if you feel like it's yours now let me help you not to feel like that or to think like that you were born on this earth you did not create your own birth someone else did you walk on this earth the law of gravity that keeps you here instead of floating in space somebody else put that in motion and does not charge you interest you're breathing every single second and you're not paying for it you're paying we're paying for everything we're paying for gas and <laughs> it's going up that's why Jesus is coming back on the horse and his army <laughs> probably because <laughs> gas prices will be going through the roof have you noticed in the last days in book of revelation there was no cars the way this world is going i see why we're paying for everything have you noticed god doesn't charge you for air have you noticed god doesn't charge you for your body he doesn't charge you for none of those things he's actually the owner and god doesn't want anything he just wants you to acknowledge his lordship over your life and as a christian we have subscribed to that already and we said god you're my lord I'm just saying guys let's begin to update our thinking the goal today is not that hey I just want to force myself but sometimes I've noticed this about myself by living generous life it helps to reinforce generous mind and sometimes having a generous mind helps me to live a generous life but sometimes my mind's like uh oh and then I just do it because it's the right thing to do and I see my mind shifts a little bit more and a little bit more as I hear the teaching as I begin to practice the teaching my mind begins to catch up a little bit more the goal of this teaching today is not for you to give to church the goal is for you to change your thinking concerning you're not the owner God is and you're the manager and if this helps you to lose control my friend come on we need less control freaks in this world God wants to give us self-control God will help us with that and having God as your provider is way better than having yourself as your provider because then you can go to God and you say Lord God my problems are your problems I'm surrendering my problems to you and I know that you will stay up during the night and worry about that and I'm going to sleep why because you're my provider I, I you're my provider you're my shepherd you're my good Lord come on somebody number two not only it's a privilege number two is giving should be a priority so if apostle paul would come and teach on the topic of finance or especially generosity he would say giving should be a priority first corinthians chapter 16 verse 2 it says on the first day of each week you should each put aside a portion of the money you have earned don't wait until i get there and then try to collect it all at once so paul was teaching that on the first day of the week which is sunday the seventh day of the week is Saturday so on the first day of the week is the day that Jesus rose from the dead the early church would meet together in houses and Paul would say to people who did not have a cultural background of Judaism where tithing and giving to the temple was the norm uh, the early church didn't have temples they didn't have priests that they needed to support financially but Paul is still saying to them hey guys when you come on the first day of the week on Monday you know it was actually a, excuse me Sunday it was actually their work week so imagine the church was gathering on your Monday like you know how our Monday is like we all go to work their Monday was Sunday so everybody was gathering together on the first day of the week which is Sunday and Paul would say when you come together you know all of you you have a prophecy you have a song you have something to share he says but don't forget to bring uh, something also and give toward uh, the church offering so that when I come we don't have to do one big fat offering but we could just already have what's collected as Christians we practice this thing called the principle of the first the Bible says seek first the kingdom of God we gather on Sunday because it's the first day of the week 
the first day of the week is not Monday it's Sunday that's why you want to bring your family to church because you want to teach your family say hey thank God America has a day off on Sunday that means that we start the week on Sunday with going to church in the morning when you wake up you want to start not with TikTok but with the Word of God when you wake up in the morning instead of checking the emails responding to everybody's text messages you wake up a little bit early get your cup of coffee and then you just spend time with the Lord you begin to honor him worship him invite his presence we also take first three days of the month to fast and pray it's not a rule it's a principle of putting God first it originated a long time ago when Israel went into the promised land God's like hey the first city Jericho I want you to dedicate that to me when they exited Egypt God was saying hey the firstborn I want you to dedicate them to me the firstborn of your sheep the first fruits dedicate them to me it wasn't as much as a law as a principle God's like I want you to put me first and I will bless the rest and usually I found out this about my life if God is not first he barely or rarely ever fits a second third or fourth or fifth it's not that God you can put God first. God is so big he takes everything. It's that with our time, with our finances, God says I want you to give me a priority. See some of us don't tip, don't tithe, we tip. You know how tipping works? You eat if it's good, the service was good, the waitress didn't have an attitude and they brought you exactly everything that you wanted and like they really went out of the way. You're like man 25 percent. But if the service was bad, they didn't bring the food right, you asked three times water without ice and it's three times there was ice and you're like no no tip today I'm not even sure if I'm gonna pay for the meal that's called tipping and a lot of us do that with God we come to church we're like we'll see how the month goes Lord if you come through you can count on me to give you 10 percent but Lord if you don't come through <laughs> You can know one thing, ain't nothing coming out of my pocket. <laughs> That's called tipping, not trusting. See trusting is when you start the month with and you're like man I got a lot of bills, I got a lot of responsibilities but Lord I trust you by putting you first in my finances. Amen. I don't know where the rest of it will come. Maybe Verizon is not going to get paid this month but Lord I trust you and you will see God will find enough funds for Verizon God will find enough funds for, for, for everything else and He will help you to give you wisdom and self-control. Come on, say, say this with me. Privilege. Number two, priority. Number three is proportional. Somebody say proportional. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 3, it says, For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. NLT says for I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford but far more. They did it out of their own free will. Proportional means you give according to your ability. Now it's interesting that Apostle Paul does not say to give percentage. Like he talks about proportional meaning each person needs to find their own proportion meaning according to your ability. Now 10% is a good place to start. Some people do more. Um, but then he uses this thing. He says, give according to your ability. And he says, and some people, yes, beyond their ability were freely willing. You know, when I would read this in my earlier days, I'm like, what? Give beyond your ability? Are you kidding me? That's abuse. Like God would want me to give translation actually says what you cannot afford I was like heck no God is not gonna ask you that that's not God of the Bible but then I'm thinking like that's just so radical that is so like not normal but in our culture it's completely normal to buy what you cannot afford live above your means we actually call it the normal American life is when you spend more than you make that's why we got credit cards so the idea that you can give above your means <gasps> I'm gonna die but the idea that I can live above my means that's the way to live and Paul flips the script and says guys don't live above your means he says give in proportion but he says some radical people <laughs> give above meaning give they can't afford to give but they still do it and Paul doesn't say 
they are unwise that what that widow that gave everything she had hmm she should have seen a financial counselor first that was totally not cool and she gave to a temple that was not super responsible even with finances we don't see that notion from Jesus that somehow giving radically is unwise now in the, in the eyes of the world now I'm not in any way giving anybody ideas to do something reckless with their giving but I feel like the time has come what a lot of us feel more comfortable being reckless with our spending and somehow have grown in such a wisdom of God that the real Toshia <laughs> that God forbid we will never give if it does not make sense or if it's not wise when Jesus asked the man who followed him who was rich to sell everything and follow him was that wise no but that was Jesus <laughs> When the guy who had a very profitable year decided to expand his business, hire more staff, get bigger building, was that wise? Yeah! Jesus called him a fool. The wisdom of this world could be a foolishness in the eyes of God. I'm not in any way suggesting you should pull your credit card right now and max your credit card giving to the church building fund. But what I'm saying is that maybe we can start first by saying, hey, I'm not going to live above my means. And be open to that possibility that God does not subscribe to your definition of wisdom and if he does suggest things don't go rebuking the devil because it could be perhaps maybe the Holy Spirit I've experienced that myself when that thought came in to take my savings and give it away or to give our second car we already had one car give it away and I'm like what about me what am I gonna drive you know and I had hundred forty dollars in our account and so in you know I was like God would never ask me that and then I was reminded he asked his son to die on the cross I was like never mind <laughs> he can ask for things but God will always give you the strength to do that and I remember we you know when we gave that second car and and I'll be honest I'll be very honest with you I was very young in this whole giving thing and so I was hoping I'm like okay well I gave a car God's gonna bless me with a car then I looked at all of my friends who had extra cars I was like God please don't bless me with the car because if they're gonna bless me with an extra car Lord I'm gonna walk <laughs> and God's like you didn't give so I can give you a car you gave because I wanted you to be a blessing and plus you live close to church walk <laughs> I lived like three three houses from the church and, and my wife walked a post office which is even closer than this he's like walk all of my men walked and they still were alive you can walk <laughs> 10 15 minutes it will do you good and I walked for three four months and stuff and so and then we we got a different car but I really want to encourage you give in proportion but be open to the possibility where there will be moments in your life God will challenge you to give above your proportion okay what God is against is us living constantly above our means but it's not scripturally against sometimes giving above our means Number four, giving should be purposed. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 it says, Let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, what I want to keep or want to warn is the issue of pressure. I want us to avoid giving out of pressure and hungry gen. We are not going to do that. But we will pressure you to give some people are afraid of the topic of giving or generosity because people have pastors sometimes leaders well intentional had financial needs and pressured people to give and Paul in here says don't give out of that don't give because you were pressured the other part I want to mention about not giving way is when you're manipulated manipulation especially happens with spiritual leaders who prophesy or give you a word from God that you should give X amount of numbers I think most of it, 99% of that is pure manipulation and we have to walk away from that. We can't, please, if somebody inboxes you on Instagram and says, this is Vladimir Savchuk and I have an orphanage and gives you a WhatsApp number that starts with Nigerian zip code, you can be certain 
and no matter what prophecy they give you or how accurate that prophecy is or if they call you and they put a cloth over the microphone and they give you kind of like to start manipulating you spiritually and I'm not making this up I receive maybe six today messages and every day from 10 to 15 people responding back and saying is this you is this you and this is common today in the Christendom where Christians fall prey there's a couple in our church before Bushiri came to our church some some years ago somebody pretended to be a Bushiri and told the woman they said I see crisis in your family read her mail pretty much explained everything that was happening with her kids and was 100% right if you don't sell ten thousand dollars within next two hours your other daughter will die and she's like this preacher is coming to church pastor Vlad mentioned it and he's messaging me on Facebook I must be special and then this preacher scammer says you can't tell to your husband well that should give you a red flag first of all ten thousand dollars for the safety of your family uh, I don't get what kind of profit that is unless it's Elijah who's coming to a widow and say hey woman share the pancake with me and you're gonna live like okay I could get that Elijah what Elijah pancake we can split the pancake but ten thousand dollars and some kind of a threatening word my friend like we have to be careful now if people present a need and say hey we have this need can you help us that's a different story but the moment begins a preacher or a pastor myself included starts attaching a number or some of us get so clever in Christian charismatic circles they take a verse in the Bible and they name the verse name as this is the amount that you should give I don't know I don't, I'm 34 35 years old so I don't know yeah that's manipulation the Bible says not pressure not manipulation but another thing you don't need the prompting you don't need God to hit you with two by four. Oh, I need to give. He says, whatever your purpose in your heart, you know what that means? He says that, hey, are you mature? You don't have to get three feathers get in your room and a golden tooth right here and seven green lights on your way to church to know, yeah, I think I need to be tithing. God says, you can purpose in your heart. You and your spouse can have a conversation tomorrow saying, you know what, we've been coming to Hungry Gen. You know what, we haven't been consistent with giving. Let's begin to give. You don't need to say, well, let's ask, what does the Lord want us to do? Uh, he kind of made it pretty clear. He's a generous God and he wants his children to reflect his nature. We don't need a prompting. I've heard people say, like, I've been coming to Hungry Gen for a year. The Lord hasn't told me to give. He didn't. Did he tell you to brush your teeth? Or have you been brushing your teeth because it's the right thing to do? Has he told you to take a shower? No. Huh. But look how mature you have become. You learned to take a shower. And the world is better because of it. What would happen if we would mature in our Christian life and some things like love your family. You don't need God to zap you with your power with the power when he said clearly love your neighbor as yourself. God doesn't have to speak to us clearly about things he made very clearly in his word there were times I felt strongly led by the Lord to give an extravagant gift to ministries help the poor this year it wasn't like that January came we already had some expenses lined up we needed to pay for this we need to buy this and then I told my wife and I said you know what it's been a while since we gave radically it wasn't God coming in Vlad you haven't given because I've been tithing I've been giving about my tithe and I said honestly I know we have expenses we are always gonna have expenses I said we've been fasting you know 21 days I'm like why don't we also take time and just give we both agreed on the number and for those of you who are husband and wife and you always argue about the number let me help you whichever number is bigger that's from God <laughs> that's been my point with my wife so we, we we met with my wife and, and she's like you know what Let, let's do that we always gonna have needs there's always like you know Jesus says you will always have poor with you but me you don't have always with you meaning like those those moments your heart is inclined and we're like let's agree we purposed in our heart then we prayed for a few days to who and where to help she had few names I had few names and then we reached out to those people we reached out to those ministries and gave that and it wasn't like oh my gosh God told me no it's it's what I as a Christian now know what to do 
I want to I want to be so mature in some areas especially in giving where God can trust me to when he gives extra I don't need to be reminded to me that's a sign to be like him and help other people the whole Ukraine thing we raised six hundred fifty thousand dollars in three weeks God didn't tell me to do that you know what happened I didn't even want to talk about it when I was live streaming on Thursday I just it came out of my mouth I said let's pray for Ukraine and then people start giving and they said for Ukraine and the next day somebody donated a large sum of money and they said for Ukraine I was like what am I gonna do with that I was like I don't know anybody and they're like well you're Ukrainian you'll figure it out <laughs> so I called my pastor and I said hey we got like I think it was three thousand dollars what do I do he's like well you're Ukrainian we need to help our people and I was like okay but where do we start he's like well I'll help you it wasn't like God said Vlad help the refugees it's just obvious the Bible says to help refugees you don't need to hear from God on that when God already has spoken it but it does help when God gives you prompting what I'm just saying is don't be prompting junkie where you constantly like okay I won't move I know people for example like uh, it actually people like that receive deliverance where a person will not take a step forward physically literally without flipping the Bible and seeing a verse that will come up to them whether they should go to the bathroom or not there are people like that it's actually demonic oppression it's totally not normal it starts as spiritual and it gets to that point where you you no longer function as an individual who can make decisions God's like whatever you decide in your heart I will honor that as long as you and your spouse are in agreement and as long as it's not a manipulation as long as not somebody bribing you or pushing you into it God's like I want you to be mature enough reflect my image you don't need to be zapped every single time to do what something that Christians are supposed to do are you with me the last one and I'm way past my time now just two minutes past my time the last one is giving should be progressive so 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 4 through 7 it talks about imploring us I read that first portion imploring us with much urgency that we should receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering of the saints and not only as we had hoped but they first gave themselves to the Lord then to us by the will of God so we urge Titus that as as he had begun that he would complete this grace in you also but that you abound in everything in faith in speech in knowledge in all diligence and in your love for us see that you abound in this grace also another translation says that you excel also in the gracious act of giving so Paul pretty much to summarize it says giving is a privilege giving should be a priority giving should be proportional giving should be purposed sometimes you get promptings sometimes you don't but it shouldn't be pressured it shouldn't be manipulation it shouldn't be it shouldn't be like that and then he says last one it should be progressive meaning you should excel you should grow in the area of generosity now most of us if you're in business if you're in any kind of job you want to have a raise who doesn't raise your hand who doesn't want to have a raise okay nobody who wants to have a raise for those of you hungry and staff put your hand down <laughs> I'm going to be like, <laughs> two hands going up. <laughs> Everybody wants to raise. It's a normal thing. We all want to excel. And it's not only in our, in our income. We also want to grow in our faith. Anybody wants to grow in their faith? Anybody wants to grow in love? Anybody wants to grow in speech? Maybe still less speaking <laughs> or speaking better. We all want to grow. Anybody wants to grow in knowledge? Everybody. And then Paul adds this thing and he says I want you to also excel or abound meaning grow in the area of generosity and we wouldn't usually think in the area of generosity that we should grow we're like man the Lord should grow my finances the Lord should grow my my business and that's God gives power to get wealth the Bible says he blesses the work of our hands but in here he puts the challenge and me as a disciple he says I want you to also abound and grow in your generosity I started to keep that last year you know income and the giving both the giving a hungry gen to other ministries to other causes to keep to see the percentage as well for my personal thing to see am I growing each month or every six months or every year in the area of giving because it's possible that the income grows I know that about myself but my generosity gets stagnant 
and Paul teaches us. He doesn't force feed the whole tithing concept as much as he says, hey, I want you to see it as a privilege. God owns it, you manage it. I want you to make it a priority. I want you to do it proportionally with your income and sometimes God will lead you to do more than that. He says, I want you to learn to purpose in your heart. You don't need to be always prompted, but make sure you're not pressured. And then thirdly, he's like, watch your generosity that you excel in that area. Don't stay stagnant in that area. Don't stay the same in that area. Seek to grow in that area and increase in that area as well. You know what generosity helps us? It helps to break the spirit of mammon over our life. It helps to break materialism out of our life. It frees our hands. I've shared this on a Vision Sunday. When your financial world is wrapped in this, you're holding tightly to everything. You're also not making any room for God to give you anything more. When your hand gives, your hand is now open to receive. When your hand is always closed, it's closed maybe to God, it's closed maybe to your family, but then it's going to be also closed from receiving from God. So generosity helps us to keep our hand open. Generosity also what it helps us is it, it refocuses our heart toward things of God. Generous people tend to be more happier. Somebody did a study, they said that a 75,000 75, a year is the income that it requires to be the happiest you will be in the United States. Now 75 is still a lot of money, but they said after 75,000, anything you get more, your happiness stays on the same level that it was at 75. But the only way your happiness can increase after that is if your giving increases, not your income. So most of us, once you hit that thing, you must understand your happiness will get stuck. You will get more busy though, you will get more worried and you will have a lot more anxiety because more money uh, means more business, more work and everything. But for your happiness to increase, you have to start increasing some kind of a way where you give. If you don't live a generous life, you may, even if you're not a Christian here today and you may disagree with me on some of the things that I've used, I can tell you one thing that you and I will agree with. The reason why Dead Sea is dead is because the water flows in and it doesn't flow out. Nothing grows there. If that is going to be you financially, you become a bottleneck. Things come in, nothing goes out. If you're not giving, if you're not loving, if you're not forgiving, if nothing goes out, you bottleneck your own happiness, your own blessing. Ask my wife, you know, when she came back and, and she's literally, she's like, lad, I love going to mission trips. And I'm like, you know, ask her why. And she's like, honestly, it gives me joy to give. See the smile on their face. You know, 20 years ago, when people from America would send humanitarian aid to Ukraine and my parents would get a cereal box, a little tiny cereal box with all this like uh, donut looking um, uh, cereal, how do you call them? Cereals and the different colors. Oh my God. Huh? Fruit? Those. Man. If you, can, if you guys can only imagine the joy we would experience. They, Americans wouldn't send us milk. We had a cow for that. But the cereal part, man, little jeans, a little coat. We were driving this week with my wife and I'm like, how amazing it is that 20 years later, we're able to send over $600,000 worth of goods now to the same place that, sometime, that one time somebody from the United States sent to us. See when God blesses us with more, He gave us a miracle. When we struggle, we say God give me a miracle financially and God gives us a miracle and man how great it is when God gives you a financial miracle. But when God keeps giving, now He expects you to be someone else's miracle. That pastor, he said this has never ever happened to them where he says people have given us before broken busted things he said the fact that we gave a van it's actually almost brand new that they can use we didn't record a lot of the emotion when we paid for their church bills that they were behind for a few months because they keep hosting the refugees so take all the extra money to feed refugees they didn't even pay their own rent 
him and his wife broke down right there and they would say it's a miracle you are an answer to our prayer we didn't know we were answering somebody's prayer by simply living out what God didn't tell us just it was the right thing to do why because there are times you become you experience a miracle and that's so much joy you want to keep on living in that joy be someone else's miracle and that's what generosity allows us to do and hungry gen you and i are a part of that hey thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to hungrygen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.